Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning everyone. So, here uh, I am Dr. Vivek Singh from Banaras Hindu University Department of English. Uh, I would like to introduce a bit more about who I am, what I have been doing. I did my UG and PG from Banaras Hindu University Department of English and thereafter I did my Master of Philosophy MPhil from Pondicherry University and my PhD is from University of English and Foreign Languages Hyderabad. After that, I moved to Aligarh Muslim University and I did my, uh, like I taught them uh, for one year over there and after that, currently I am teaching past 8 years in Banaras Hindu University Department of English. So, after a point of time, I grew my interest in comic studies and which is why I have introduced a course titled Decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India. The reason why I have, in, I have developed an interest and why I want you also to develop interest into this field is because it opens up a lot of possibilities to explore the idea of a gender, class, caste, culture, etc. However, we have also tried to explore these fields, but Comic studies open up a new way to understand these ideas and so far comic studies were already like comics were always marginalized, it was never taken seriously which we will discuss one by one when I will be opening up all the lectures. So, what I want from my students or whoever is listening to this is they are supposed to pay attention and make sure that you have uh, taken up a pen and paper, so that you can note down all the important uh, ideas and it the question like all the questions and all the answers which I will be offering you, it will be more informative, comprehensive and also I have tried to make it as simple as possible. So, uh, in the first lecture, the title is Thinking Comics terminologies and devices. So, let me go to the slide number 1. Here you see that, here you see that there are many terms, there are comic strips, comic anthologies, graphic novels, graphic memoirs, picture stories, comic arts. So, these are the terms which the moment we listen to comic studies or when we see that we are going to read comic narratives, these are the things that come to our mind. But what happens when we are not getting into the details of it or we are not reading it comprehensively, what we find that they have been used interchangeably. Let us say for example, think for a second, if I ask you what is the difference between graphic narratives and comic studies, you will see that there is hardly any difference. However, there are a lot of people who have explored this field and they see that there is a lot of difference. Let me ask you a different questions. When you say comics, do not you think that it is a very much near to the idea of a cartoons? But if you ask any scholar who have wasted enough in comic studies, they would say that no, cartoons and comics, they are very much different. So, what I am suggesting in the first lecture that the definition of a comics is very difficult and which is why we are supposed to go into the history and trace the history of it to understand what the comics is and what are the dynamics of it, what is the function of it, what is the medium of it rather than thinking that cartoons, comics, graphic narratives, comic arts, they all are the same. So, moving to the next slide, here you see in uh, slide number 3, you will interestingly see that there are two important people I have noted down. One is Will Esner's Comics and Sequential Art and another one is 
Scott McCloud. He has written a book called Understanding Comics. To my friends who are starting comic studies at the beginning and they have like not done a research and they want to develop this field as a research, for them I would suggest that they, are, they must read these two books, one by uh, Will Eisner, Comics and Sequential Art and second one is by Scott McCloud, Understanding Comics. And as the lecture proceeds, I would suggest lot of books, so that it could develop your interest in comic studies field. So, let us talk about it more. So, let me move to the next slide please. Here you see, uh, most of uh, us have uh, read these kind of a comics, I have brought lot of comics together, right. And there is a certain assumptions, what I was talking about, about the definitions. Let us say for example, the slides which I am showing, you could see that there are a lot of comics, but the reason why I am asking, they are not the same. What happens most of the time, when we read comics, we see that they can be read the same way, they all are the same, there is no difference. But my dear students and friends, let me suggest you one thing, that since the history started, we have a, had a comics and every comic is different in its own way. So, therefore, any comic are not supposed to understood that, okay, we can have read of it and we can have a fun. So, what I am suggesting, the way you read novels, the way you read drama, the way you read poetry, the way you read fictions and others form of writing and you go between the lines in the same way, comic become more difficult. Let us say for example, why? So, see here that lot of uh, comics are there. What interestingly you notice and how it is different from novels. In the novel, you see only the pages on the print, nothing else, right. There are some sentences written, you are going to read them and you are going to understand them. Here what happens, you see pictures, at the same time, you also see written something on the print. So, now here you see they both are, you have to understand them both, because they both are not the same. That is why reading comics is more difficult and which is why when you are going for research, pay your attention carefully. Third thing I would like so like to ask you, uh, before I get more in details, you see that there are a lot of colors in comics when you read, right. There is a yellow color, there is a black color, there is a red color. Does that mean that we just, the comic artist, they use these colors randomly? No that is not true. They do not use randomly, they have a specific purpose, they have a specific idea that why they are going to use this color or why they are going to use that color. So, therefore, the point what I am making here is simple is that they all are very difficult and they all are very different from each other. So, therefore, reading comics is more complex and intriguing at the same time. Let me move to the next slide. So, here you see uh, the point I was making a few minutes before that there is a cartoon, right? And then uh, 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 generally what happens, a general audience, they think that they are reading comics, but that is not true. This is not a comics, this is a cartoon. Let me move to the next slide. So, here that is the interesting part, like why I uh, brought this up. Here you see that on the front page, on the top of it, you see there is a cartoon and just down to it, you see this is a comics, right. So, this is what we are supposed to understand the difference between these two. The first thing that you see on the top where a boy is pulling a rickshaw or uh, riding a rickshaw, it is something called cartoon where you can see on the newspaper. Whereas, when you go down, what interestingly you see that this is a kind of a story, this is not the cartoon, this is something called comics. So, now let me go back to the etymology, because as a student of literature or let us say humanities and social science, we need to know where the word come from, because until and unless we know the etymology of a particular word, it is very difficult to make an idea. Let us say for example, when I go to the classroom, I also ask my students, what do you mean by university? 
so they have some understanding but it's always good to go and see the etymology of a university which is called universitas anyway so the idea what i'm saying is that we need to also go back to etymology so here on the slides if you see this idea of a cartoon comes from the french word cartoon an italian word cartone meaning a drawing on a strong paper the extension of the uses of this word to drawing in newspapers and magazine especially in boxed panels so i'll tell you in the coming lectures or let's say in the in few to 5 minutes that what i mean by boxed panels these are the terms or let's say put it in a different way these are the jargons which are associated with the this these are jargons which are associated with comics so panels strips box panels uh, they are the jargons i'll explain what i mean by this so uh, look look back to the slides to know the etymology of it so uh, it is came in the 1840s and sometime interestingly what you find there's these cartoons are also called funnies f u e r e n i e s and that was a very popular in 1850s and i'm sure that you can easily understand because uh, comics means something funny so i think the idea of a funnies come from there so going back to so going back to the next slides please so here you see that is a, a very interesting thing which i wanted to tell you and uh, uh, something called a progressive and sequential so here you see this is a uh, uh, called uh, as we uh, come to know today that uh, cartoons has been evolved and funnies through the presence of an overarching continuity whether it be progressive where an entire page is considered as a frame or sequential where multiple panels are arranged on a single page to show continuity at one glance so although we will know more in details about everything so but for now what i wanted to uh, bring to your notice is this that two things keep remembering one something called pro progressive another one is something called sequential so as we got to know that progressive suggest where entire page where at entire page is considered as a frame so what you will see that on one page there is just one frame and whereas the second is called sequential where you will find that small small panels are there and the story develops so i'll tell you the examples in the uh, coming uh, uh, lecture so uh, moving to the next slide please here you see that i have uh, given to you the very idea of uh, certain jargons which are familiar uh, with you or which i want you to understand so here you see this is a panel there is something called gutter then there is something called suspension of disbelief then there is something called composition then there is something called captions then there is something called speech bubbles and thought bubbles and then sound effects right so i would ask you to look at this slides closely and try to understand what i mean by this let me uh, uh, show you this slides again and make you understand that what is a captions you see on the slide this is something called this is a comic strip so here you see uh, uh, captions and what interestingly i wanted to tell you is this called what is a gutter you know what is a gutter because most of the time when you will be reading comics you will be familiar with when you see this is a panel basically right this is a panel there are two panels here you see on this uh, ppt so this is the two panel the gap between these two panel this is called a gutter right this is a called a gutter and then second thing as we see speech bubbles here bubbles is something when you read on the comics when you see that something is being spoken so this is called bubble you see 1 2 3 right so this is called bubbles now what is a panel panel if you see on this uh, slide panel this is a panel as i have explained the space that contains a single scene usually in the shape of a square or rectangle so which means see this is a panel so which suppose someone asks you how many panels are there on this screen you are going to give an answer that there are only two panels not more than that right so this is a one panel and this is the second panel what is a gutter 
that there is something that is space you see between one first panel and the second panel. What is the bubbles? When someone speaks, it is the technique of an artist to show you that what he is going to speak. All right. So, uh, so the basic uh, component of a comics must be clear since these terms will be used throughout the course often without much explanation. Panels are the spaces that contain a single scene contained in a box like structure. Gutters are the spaces or gaps present between adjacent panels. Capsules often as inset boxes within panels give information about the scene shown in the panel. A speech bubbles show what the characters are saying. Thought bubbles indicate that the characters are thinking and the sound effect with the use of onomatopoeic words give a dimension of the oral to the otherwise visual verbal medium. Moving to the next slides, here you see uh, I have uh, I have uh, given like I wanted to give you more explanations. So, here you see this is a cartoon like, but this is a single panel cartoon right. So, here you see this is single panel cartoon. So, after the establishment of single panel cartoons comics appeared in the form of strips right. So, this is a difference I wanted to bring. So, here you see the first on the slides on the top you see single panel cartoons and here you see this is a multi paneled strips, multi paneled strips. So, dear students here what you see this is a single panel cartoon right, this is a single panel cartoon and this is a multi paneled strips right, here you see 1, 2 and Three. So, this is called 1, 2, 3 and this is a strips. So, because in the comics in fact, let me explain it more beautifully to you when you read the Tommy, times of India or any newspaper what you interestingly find in the newspaper there are certain strips right there are certain strips. So, when in my childhood days what I used to do when I used to read times of India and later I started following uh, the Indian Express. So, what happens in this every day you will see there are set of strips with different panels and they will be telling you some form of a story and the next day the story will be developed, the next day the story will be developed. So, here you see this is a strips what you notice on the newspaper nothing but strips with three set of panels or four set of panels or five set of panels and later day next day we are more inquisitive to read what is going to happen on the next day or what is going to happen thereafter day. So, which means the story is developing later on. If we compile let us say for example, if you have collected one month newspaper and pick up all the strips and bring them together and publish it or give it to someone it will be called a comics. So, therefore, this is a very simple way to explain you. So, on the slides if you see one is a called single panel cartoons and here you see multi paneled strips which means there are three panels 1, 2 and 3 and this all thing combined together will be called strips. Moving to the next slides, here you see now it is just for a homework I am giving it to you what I mean to say that you can pause the video for a second and understand what I have taught you so far. So, on this slides what you interestingly find that first there are two strips 1 right and then 2, but suppose if I ask you how many panels are there 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So, which means there are 6 panels, but 2 strips this is entire is called 1 and the second one is called 2. So, which means here you see on the bottom I what I have mentioned 2 into 3 panel divisions which means there are 2 strips and 3 panels alright. In each strip what we have in each strip what we have 3 panels. So, here dear students and friends 2 strips with 3, 3 panels in each strip we have 3 panels. So, I am sure so far you have you are finding this very easy and you are smoothly learning what I am trying to make you understand. So, let me go to the next slides. So, just to make the task more easy 
I have given you another things to do homework. So, here you see this is a basically a comic right and here you see there are three strips and in each strip you see there are three panels. So, you can pause the video and you can read. Okay, let me move to the next slides. All right. So, interestingly this is nothing but I am just showing you the way comic strips have developed so far and how you can make sense out of it. Now, this is where we will enter into the something called comic arts. So, so far we have become familiar with what comics is and its nuances which means jargons associated with comics. Now, we are going to switch to comic arts. So, now so far what we try to understand what is a comic. In fact, I will explain it more the coming lecture because comic arts is a wider term which has encompassed lot of things and we will talk also about the debates and discussions which have been happening so far in relation to the comic arts. But for now go back reflect for 5 minutes and think over that what I have taught so far so that we can move quickly into comic arts. So, dear friends when before I talk about what comic arts are let me tell you also the seriousness of this course. I am sure that you remember someone called Salvador Dali and I am sure that every student of literature, humanities and social science know this name. Salvador Dali once said, in fact he, is a, he was a painter I am sure that you remember. So, once he said that in the coming future, in the coming times comics is going to be the future. So, let me uh, show you his uh, exact quote what he said and then you can exactly understand that why today we are talking about comic arts or let us say graphic narratives because someone called very famous painter Salvador Dali already predicted that future is going to belong to comics or let us say comic arts to say, be, to say more appropriately and which is why it is a high time as a student of humanities and social sciences we are we must get into grip with comic arts so that we can read the nuances and we can talk more on it and also about the do lot of research on it. So, let me show you what Salvador Dali once said. So, here goes to the slides. I just want you to read and reflect on it. Comics will be the culture of the year 3794 which means 3794. So, you are 1827 years ahead which is good that leaves me enough time to create a collage with these 80 comics that I am talking with me. It will be the birth of a comic art and on that occasion we will hold a grand opening with my divine presence on March 4th 3794 at 9 hours 7 pm precisely. See why I am saying so the reason is this is not to be taken very literally right. This quote by Salvador Dali is not supposed to be taken very literally, but the reason why I ask you to read this quote so that you can understand the seriousness of this course and why we are supposed to understand that how serious this comics arts is. So, I am not asking you that like the time is very far. What point I am making with the quotations given by Salvador Dali is this that we should take this form or let us say this medium very seriously because so far we are not taking this medium seriously. But as the course will get over you will understand that students across world have started thinking about it and in fact something which is very serious not said before is being said through the comics. So, I will talk also about the emergent debates and also talk about the issues which are helpful in your research and also for your courses, but for now let us go more deeper into it. So, let me move to the next slides. Here comes comics arts definition and comic strips, comic books, comic albums and graphic novels, magazine and newspaper, cartooning, caricature and comics in electronic media. So, this is a definition given by 
uh, International Comic Arts Forum which is called ICAF that is based in Georgetown University since 1995 and the Comic Studies Society which is the largest community of comics scholars in the world established in 2019 adds editorial and gag cartoons, animation and other related forms and traditions to further expand the uses of the term. There is a lot of debate regarding the terminologies associated with the form itself which roots from the difficulty to gauze and define the limits of multimodalities in comics. So, here we have someone called Jean Paul Gavaliate. I would request you to note down his name. He said that a long time since the 19th century, certain roundabout names like picture narratives and drawn stories had been used to brand works of comic arts as mentioned before. Before I go to the next slide, what I wanted to talk for a second that it is always an urgency in academia to define. Whenever I go to the classrooms, I definitely debate and discuss with my students about certain terms. For example, what is a novel? What is a fiction? How they both are different? Second example, what is a drama? What is a play? How are we going to understand these two? Another example is, I am sure for the researchers, let us say, what is a representation, what is a discourse, what is an identity. These are the terms which are difficult to define, but at least everyone tries to explain and define this. What my point is my dear students, that when we are giving a definition, what are we supposed to take into the account? We are supposed to take into the account the complexities of a particular genre or medium which we are defining second example, sorry, second uh, complexities that we come across when we are going to define the term is this that let us say for example, something has developed historically since a lot years before which means thousand years before. How are going, how are we going to define it in one particular sentence or let us say in multiple sentences. Definition also must capture the historicity of it definition must also explain the cultural complexities of it until and unless it is not able to do so we will having a problem with the definition. So, therefore, it is just a suggestions to my students go back and think for a second all the kind of definitions that you have developed so far how appropriate it is and which is why every term that we come and become familiar with they are contested and debated. That is the same case goes with the comic arts or let us say for example, comics. People try to define it, people try to explain it and until and unless they do not take historical complexities and it is a panoramic dynamics into the account, it will become very difficult to define what comic art is. Second problem also comes across that let us say for example, comics developed in different countries differently, every artist has a different way to look at comics. So, until and unless we are going to give a particular definition which can capture the entire essence of it, we will always fail. What does also definitions do? What does also definitions do? That if suppose we are giving a definition and definition is also normative, which means that it always excludes something and includes something. Definitions try to do that something is important for me, something is not important for me, but as a student of literature and humanities and social science, our job is not to exclude and include, but see the complexities, historicities and dynamics of it. So, that rather than exclusion and inclusion, we should give something which can encompass every complexities related to that particular term. So, therefore, going back to the comic arts, let us see the complexities and I tell you one thing very interestingly. Once you look at the definitions and the problem, I am sure that you will get bamboozled by thinking that is it really so difficult? I never thought so. 
right? Because we have started a jumpsense about a particular term. So, when I am going to talk about the debate that happened in terms of defining what comic art is, you will see and I am sure that if you get astonished with the fact that it is really difficult to define, it is nothing unbelievable. So, here goes the first slides in terms of a definition. In English, right, it is called funnies or comic and comic strip. In German, this is called Bildergeschattings, which means it is looked at stories in images, right. So, which means that when we are moving from one language to the another, we are going to see the differences in understanding. Dutch, it is called a strip. Italian, it is called fumetti, which means speech balloons. Spanish, historietas, which means little stories, tabos or TBO, which means called comics. So, here you see this is an example of nothing but TBOs, which is developed in Italy. And here we have uh, the example of other comic stories. So, these are the linguistic differences which I wanted you to look and understand that how difficult it is for us to explain and define. Now, let us uh, look at the certain conditions uh, given by David Kunzale and I would request you to note down his name. Anyway, I am going to show you uh, his uh, full name and you can note down. So, David Kunzle, why I am talking about him? Because uh, he's, he started defining what comic art is and he gave the four definitions or let us say put it in another way. He gave us four conditions to be called something to be called as a comics. So, what are those four conditions which define that until and unless a particular comics is not going to comply with these given conditions, David Kunzle thought that it is not going to be comics. So, uh, look at the slides please. David Kunzle, the definition of early comics and the four conditions under which these stories in images can be considered proto comics. First, there must be a sequence of a separate images. There must be a preponderance of image over text. The medium in which the strip appears and for which it was originally intended must be reproductive that is in, in printed form a mass medium. The sequence that is a fourth condition must tell a story which is both moral and topical. So, my dear students I would request you to look at these four conditions and reflect for a minute right. Before you listen to me I would request you to pause the video and think for a second that what are the conditions given by David Kunzle and why did he give these specific four conditions when he was defining comics. So, you will see interestingly that David Kunzle has already had something in his mind when he was talking about comics and that is the particular reason why he gave us a four conditions. And here we have to the next slides the another person called Bill Blackbeard, right? And he is a very known American researcher and he is violently opposed to this view. So, as I was suggesting to you that David Kuzle and Billy Blackbeard, they both tried to define, but interestingly what you see, they both are renowned field, renowned person in the comics field, but they both are opposing each other which means that Billy Blackbeard and David Kunzle are not in synchronous with each other's definitions. And which is why here you see that why it is becoming so difficult for these researchers to define comics and why is it so that Billy Blackbeard did not come into terms with any definitions or any conditions given by David Kunzle. So, here we are going to see why Billy Blackbeard is different and opposed David Kunzle's view. So, moving to the slides please. What he said, a serially published episodic open ended dramatic narrative or series of linked anecdote about recurrent identified characters told in successive drawing regularly 
including balloon dialogue or its equivalent and generally minimal narrative text. So, here you see that these are the two definition given by Billy Bl Bill Blackbeard and David Kunzule. However, both definitions are not acceptable and the reason is that the slide goes like this that the third of Kunzule's condition only serves to justify the fact that he chose the invention of a printing as a starting point for the early comic strip, while Blackbeard's definition which defends the thesis of the American origin for comics applies only to printed comics and is destined to dismiss the entire field of comics that predates the appearance of Yellow Kid in 1896. What I want to suggest here, right? why I brought this before you? Why I am asking you to look these definitions? Why Blackbeard and David Kunjale's definition and their differences I brought before you? Point number one, it is difficult to define what comics is. Second, these two people are looking something specific which is not true in the case of comics. The one person is looking at comics thinking that comics is started after printing started. That is a problem. Second, for Blackbeard, the reason is he is looking at the comics by keeping in the mind American comics and he did both fail to understand that comic is far more than this. It is difficult for them to capture with their essential idea. In fact, this definitions are limiting what comics is. There is a something called a yellow kid and that came in 1896 and people fail to understand. Look at the slides please and then you will understand what I want to say. That comic would be a story, but it is not a necessarily a story, right? Generally what we think? It is a story, but it is not also going to be a story constituted by handmade images from one or several artists. It must eliminate cinema and the photo novel. Fixed images in difference from animation multiple contrary to the cartoon and juxtaposed in difference from illustration and engraved novels. But this definition applies equally well to Trezen's column and the Biox tapestry that is the definition that idea given by Pierre Coppery. So, here we see the doctrinal elements of the definition thus far. The first definition given is problematic because the insertion in the image of a verbal enunciation. right? So, first thing they are talking about, the first thing what they are talking about that there should be, there must be in fact verbal enunciation, which means we are not going to accept anything if it is not doing something with verbal enunciation. But the question comes, anyone who is familiar with the verbal or anyone familiar with the comic narratives, they will ask what about the mute comics, right? because there are a lot of comics. In fact, a study is done where you will see that there is nothing called as such a speech available. So, does that mean we are not going to understand it as a comics? What is the second definition or the second problem with the definition? Read the slide please. The permanence within the panels of at least one identifiable character at least six ways in which this can be refuted. So, here what we interestingly find that there are six ways in which we can refute this understanding that the permanence of at least one identifiable character, which means the idea that we should have one identifiable character is not going to be true. Now, here you see, right? look at the slides, you will interestingly notice that there is a mute or silent comics. right? Now, think on these slides for a second and look these slides 
and see that there is nothing called verbal enunciation on the slides. There are certain strips, right? And here you see that one panel, two panel, three panel, the two gutters are available here, and this is a one strip, right? And in this strip, what you notice that no one is speaking to anyone, no one is talking to anyone, there is nothing called verbal enunciation. But does that mean it is not a comics? Because if we go to the prior definition, what we notice that they are thinking it is a comics, right? But that is not true. Here also in the slides you see that there are certain comics developed so far, which is not speaking to anyone, they are mute. They but a story develops, idea develops, whatever the artist want to say, it is getting developed. But the reason is that the idea that every comic has to have some verbal enunciation, that is not true. So, my dear friends and students, what I want to tell you that there are mute comics available. Now, you see the kind of a talent is required, right. We have dismissed so far by saying that comics is something related to the children, right? Comics or cartoons meant for only children. But when we say it is for children, it only means that we are just saying that the kind of a caricature of level on the page, it creates a kind of a fun in the students and which is why we say it is for children. However, so far in this past 30 to 40 minutes, whatever we have spoken so far, if you interestingly realize that it is not so simple, right. How are you going like do you really think that children can read these mute and uh, silent comics where a story develops, where a story develops, but uh, there is no character speaking so far. The reason is which is why we are supposed to take seriously and the second reason that definition is really challenging, right. It is a really difficult task to take the definition and apply on all the comics. Moving to the next slides, here you see right, no human being depicted in the narrative, right. Here you see uh, <coughs> these are the two slides I have given to you. One is called the cage and the second is called a short history of America. Now, here you interestingly see that do you find any human character? The simple answer is no, right. Read this, this is the cage by uh, uh, Martin Vaughan James and the short history of America by Robert Crumb 1979. Now, think for a second that these two comics are available, right, where there is no human character and look at the imagination, look at the kind of a level of imagination and thinking capacity of the artist that despite any human character they have written a comic, right. But as far as so far we have tried to understand that comic has to do something with the humans, but the short history of America and the cage explicitly refute the very understanding that comic must have a human character. So, here you see I am just showing you that how one by one things are very different and unique in its own way. We are supposed to capture this uniqueness of the comics. Moving to the next slides, presence of a character suggested in absentia, right. In this slide, you see they have given you a certain uh, strip and certain panels. You will interestingly find that there are character present, but also not present, right. I am sure that uh, you, if you have read uh, uh, novel in uh, like, if you have read novel critically, sometimes uh, professors also suggest that setting can be also read as a character, right. Setting can also uh, be understood as if it is saying something. In fact, if we do not go to the setting, 
and if we don't understand what the setting is about, the very famous example look back in anger by Osborne, setting is very important. If we don't understand the setting, we are not going to understand the play anything, we are not going to understand anything about the play. What my point is, why I am bringing Osborne's uh, look back in anger as an example, the reason is that in this definition where character is upset, it is our thinking capacity and imagination that we are going to bring out the character from their comics. However, it is not explicitly present. Moving to the next slides, here you see there is another character, the character is not there, right. If you read this, uh, like you can zoom and read it later on, but if you see that there is character upset, but they are speaking to a particular character. So, interesting part is that the very idea given by these thinkers that there must be identifiable character, read these two comic and I am sure that you will realize there is nothing as such called physically identifiable character. Okay, so, now here we see continuing with the same idea that why there is a, a difficult to define. In the next slides what you see that there are character who undergoes mutations, right. So, if you see this comic, right, if you see this image that is uh, visible on your screen, what you interestingly notice that they all like these characters available on the screen, they are in mutation. So, you cannot understand who is what and there is another interesting uh, which you want to read, John and Betty, I am sure that it will help you. So, interesting part is that, interesting part is this that so far people say that every character has to be different from each other, right. So, when you see that every character has to be different from each other, there are also comics available to us that they all resemble with each other. There is no difference from one character to another, which means that if you see most of the comics written in the comic world, that they all are more or less almost the same. It is a very difficult to distinguish which character is what. So, the slice that is being shown to you previously is talking about that how all the characters resemble each other. So, if that kind of a comic you see, this is also a new way to look at what the comics is and what the complexity is about. So, therefore, saying that there should be a prominent character, that is not true. Saying that there should be verbal enunciation to be called comics, that is also not true. Saying that there should also be a very identifiable character, but in the comics, that is also no, in the case of comics, that is also not true. Now, we are moving to certain specific awards. The reason is that how the comic developed and what people are talking about. So, here one important name which I also spoke in the beginning of my lecture is called Will Eschner and Will Eschner won many awards. I just want you to be familiar, let us say for example, in the field of literature, when you are going to write the exam UGC net or any exams, you know what is a Pulitzer Prize award, what is a Brooker Prize award, what is a Nobel Prize award, what is a Sahit Academy award. In the same way, in the field of a comics, we also have a certain specific very renowned award and in this introductory course, I also want you to be introduced with these awards. Before that, here uh, we have uh, Will Esner, it is a very known one and I would suggest to you that if you are entering into the field of comic studies or comic arts, please read Will Esner like anything and uh, here we have uh, some comics written by him. So, what is the award that was uh, won by Esner? The first one is the Esner Award in the field of Esner Award. This award was named after Will Esner himself and is presented annually at the San Diego Comic Con to recognize achievements in the comic book industry. A comic con is a convention or coming together of a comics lovers and comic artists to celebrate comic culture and the first such convention was recovered 
in New York in 1964. Estner himself won this award several times throughout his career. Second one is the Harvey Award. This award is presented annually to recognize outstanding achievements in the comic book industry. Isner again won the award several times throughout his career as well. Third, the Inkpot Award. This award is presented annually at the San Diego Comic Con to recognize individuals for their contribution to the worlds of comics, science fiction, fantasy, film, television, animation and fandom services. Estner won the award in 1985. And then we have the National Cartoonist Society's Milton Caniff Lifetime Achievement Award. This award is presented annually to recognize lifetime achievement in the field of cartooning. Estner won the award in 1998. And then we have the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame. Estner was inducted into the Jack Kirby Hall of Fame in 1987 which recognizes individuals for their contribution to the comic book industry. It is named after the famous comic creator who along with the Stan Lee created the whole line of, of silver age Marvel superheroes. So, here you could see that Esner's major contribution is in the field of uh, comics which is called comics and sequential art principles and practices from the legendary cartoonist. So, that is a particular reason that why I introduce you these awards. The reason is that there are a lot of awards which are being circulated and I am sure that if you are going to do research or if you are going to take this comic art field seriously, you should keep eye on each particular award and who is winning what. Because the reason is that the way we get to know the Nobel Prize winner and their books in the same way, we will also get to know about the comic artist and also what is the fundamental reason why I also introduce you the, this award that the prominent figure, one of the prominent figure in fact, Will Eschner as I you saw previously that he is the one who won almost every award. So, if suppose, let us say for example, the literature field, English literature being very specific is known by the name of William Shakespeare, John Milton, William Wordsworth, Eliot. In the same way, in the comic studies, we also have certain names without whom it will be really difficult to understand comic arts. For example, one name which we must be familiar and be acquainted with is called Willisner and his extreme significant contribution in the comic art is called comics and sequential art which is his famous book and I am sure that you will uh, if you get time you will read for sure. So, now what I am going to do in the upcoming lecture going to introduce you what he is talking about in his book called comics and sequential art. So, let me uh, give a just a glimpse of it what this book is about and in the next lecture I will talk you in details. So, the slide goes like this. See, in this uh, uh, book uh, Comics and Sequential Art which came in 1985, he covers the basics of comics and graphic novels and how they can be used to tell stories. The book is divided into seven sections, each of which focuses on different aspects of a medium. Isner begins the first section by discussing the unique language of comics which he argues is formed by the repetition of images. He analyzes one of his own the spirit stories to demonstrate how the repetition of certain image can create a sense of rhythm and flow. The second section is devoted to the concept of a panel which Esner argues is the basic unit of comics. He discusses the different types of a panel, how they can be used to create different effects. In the third section, Estner discusses the importance of timing in comics. He argues that timings of panels can be used to create suspense, surprise and other emotional effects. And in the fourth section, he, is focus, he focuses on the use of lettering in comics. Estner discusses the different types of lettering and how they can be used to convey different moods and emotions. 
In section 5, Estner argues that he layout of the page is an important aspect of comics. He discusses the different ways that panels can be arranged on the page to create different effects. And then next section is about color in comics. He discusses the different ways that color can be used to create mood and atmosphere. The next section is about which is the final section of a book is the creative process behind comics and that goes more into an eighth section as well. So, Estner discusses the importance of planning and preparation and offers advice on how to develop a story from initial concept to finished product. Overall, Comics and Sequential Art, his famous book is a comprehensive guide to the medium of a comics and is an essential read for anyone interested in creating or analyzing comics. So, dear friends and students, this is uh, uh, just an idea about what this book is about. In my upcoming lecture, which means the next one, I will take each section in details, which means I will talk 5 to 10 minutes about each uh, section. The reason is that if you look at the title, comics and sequential art and also if you look at the each section, he has defined that why panel is important, why timing is important, why lettering is important, why color is important and until and unless we know what this is about, we cannot delve into comic art properly. Therefore, knowing Bill Esner is one thing and significant and the same way knowing his book and his idea will give us more vistas to understand comic arts. In fact, in my this upcoming lecture along with him, I will talk some more people who are significantly important who introduced this field and people know comic arts properly without them it has been difficult. So, uh, thank you so much, we will uh, get back soon, see you, bye bye. Thank you.